Hi, everybody. March 19, 2020. Am I right? Oh, I am right. It's Friday, March 19. Let's start. Now, I posted on this bill coming out of Sheila Jackson Lee, who introduced it, coming out of the House of Representatives that represent you. They represent you. Do you feel represented? I don't feel represented. But new gun bill draws hot debate over controversial text. Quite controversial. Your ex, a doctor, your finances, all could keep you from owning a gun. A gun license bill created using the lessons learned from Sandy Hook and Parkland is now in its infancy in Congress. The goal is to keep guns out of the hands of people with mental illness, but the ways that would be to, that the ways that that would be determined are causing some controversy. Our Jeannie Blaylock investigates tonight. It's pure grade A unadulterated. <laughs> Gun rights activists are riled up. Attorney Colleon Noor speaking out against H.R. 127. It is a gun license and registration bill. One part says to own a firearm, you have to be evaluated by a licensed psychologist who interviewed any spouse of the individual or any former spouse of the individual and at least two other persons. So the person who likely isn't too fond of you at best and absolutely hates your guts at worst will now be in a position to strip you of your Second Amendment rights. However, Ron Davis sees merit in a mental health evaluation done in the proper way. Absolutely. You may remember his son Jordan shot and killed at a Southside gas station in an argument over loud music. Davis tells me if his son's killer, now in prison for life, had had psychological testing to own a gun, Somebody might have found out that he was much too aggressive in his thought pattern about why he had a gun. But Davis does not at all endorse H.R. 127. He points to the proposed insurance fee, $800 to own a gun. Let's say a battered woman that's uh, getting uh, paid, you know, paycheck to paycheck, she may not have $800, but yet she may feel she needs to defend herself. So... Why should you put her at risk? And more opposition to that mandatory insurance fee. It's an industry killer, you know, for our industry. Z Farhat manages the gun department at Green Acres in Jacksonville. We're a mom and pop store. We have eight families living out of this one store. So it, it's scary. Our First Coast News crime analyst, Mark Bachman, 35 years in law enforcement, is leery about the bill overall. I think you're also treading on some Second Amendment constitutional issues, um, you know, and uh, I, I just don't think this is the right way to do it. The bill calls for the registration with the Bureau, ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, of each firearm present in the United States. Bachman says that's no new help to law enforcement. Well, typically they can go to ATF and they can make an inquiry uh, and find out if the individual has purchased a gun. Plus, the bill says you must now list how many guns you have, and where you keep them. And this database would be public. Now you're, you're publicizing the fact you have a certain amount of guns in your house, maybe more than one, maybe 10, maybe 20, who knows. It's going to pose a danger to the person that owns the gun because now they're subject they could be broken into. But Bachman likes the part which mandates a training course on the use, safety, and storage of firearms. You see a number of shootings in Jacksonville, unfortunately, where children get guns that are lying around. So, mixed reactions to the bill, sponsored by Sheila Jackson Lee, Democrat, Texas. No co-sponsors as of yet, and H.R. 127 is just getting to the Judiciary Committee in the U.S. House. So it has a long, long way to go. A virtually identical bill failed to pass in 2019, but now things are different in Washington. The other bills fizzled out typically because the Republicans had control of at least one of the two chambers. Now the Democrats are in control. The NRA has filed bankruptcy and gun safety groups like Moms Demand Action feel optimistic gun bills will pass. Founder Shannon Watts says it has been 25 years since the federal government passed a gun safety law. That wait, she says, is over. 
Jeannie Blaylock, First Coast News, on your side. On your side. Did you listen to the audio? That, I, that this is mainstream media. I mean, look, YouTubers, myself, I can understand we're not so technically, you know, um, we don't really, oh, well, I'll speak for myself. I just post, right? The audio sucks. But you would expect mainstream media to at least have some audio expertise. They don't. It was hard to even follow with that music. All right. Not good, right? No co-sponsors. That's good. Sheila Jackson Lee should be removed from office. This is a takedown of the Second Amendment. You have to, you have to register. You have to tell when you register where those guns are, how many guns you have, exactly where they are, and then they're going to make that public. Are you kidding me? All right, there's so much to this bill that is so outlandish, but will people even care? Will the left care? No. Or maybe they will now, because, boy, they were buying an awful lot of guns last year. Oh, those lefties who wanted to take the guns away, they were a big Uh, percentage of the people who were buying guns last year because of all of our peaceful protests. Well, there will only be more and more of these. There will only be more and more until they finally get what they want, the guns taken away. Yeah, those on the left, they just think, oh my God, you're just so crazy and you're twisting the truth and they don't want to take, no, look into it. Oh, please get out of your leftist psyche. It's so oh, disturbing and, you know, to think I was on that side for an awful long time until... I recognized, wow, this side doesn't care about the truth. They only care about winning. They only care about their team winning and getting their team leader in the White House. That's so unfortunate when people are so unbelievably stuck in this dichotomous thinking that we have a red team and a blue team, and you can't think, you know, outside of that. The statists who love government worship it, believe in it, believe that government is going to come to save us, and they can't even consider maybe all of these mass shootings. Maybe our government has something to do with it, Maybe this is part of the agenda, you know, create the problem, get the reaction, and voila, step in and create the solution. Take those guns away. Too many killings from mass shootings. We lack brain power to ever get beyond this madness that we are living. Okay. I have posted several videos on Drag Queen Story Hour. I have voiced my opinion. And this is not about drag queens. It's not about, you know, the, 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 the whole agenda. It's This is so friggin' inappropriate for children. It's beyond belief. Beyond belief. But here, does anybody in this room know how to twerk the drag queen? Ask the five-year-olds. How can adults... Bring their five-year-olds to this. This funny little dance is from Fortnite. Does anybody know any of the dances from Fortnite? Oh, then you are a credit to your community. (laughs) But most of all, Michael likes to twerk. Now, does anybody in this room know how to twerk? 
Okay, right, but it's quite important to the story, so I will just give you a very quick demonstration. <laughs> All you need to do is you just stand with your feet sort of shoulder width apart, like so. Okay, and I'll, sh I'll show you at the side so you can get a better view that way. And you, you crouch down into this sort of position here, so your thumb's sticking out. Don't be taking this all in. <laughs> and then you just move your thumb up and down like that. And that's twerking. <laughs> this funny little dog. So that's appropriate for a five-year-old. Man. Uh, we live in a very sick, sick, sick world. Former head of group that sponsors Drag Queen Story Hour arrested on child pornography charges. Judge Brett Bloomy, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, former head of the Cream City Foundation. Cream City, wow. Okay, which sponsors Drag Queen Story Hour in Milwaukee. Milwaukee County Circuit Judge Brett. Bloomy, judge. And he's a judge that uh, is for family court or, oh, here, Milwaukee County's Children's Court. Whoa. Well, we have a lot of these people working in, well, fields that relate to children. Why do they go into those fields? Because they're like Bloomy. Taken into custody by special agents following an investigation into multiple uploads of child pornography through a kit mess messaging application account in October, November 2020, uh, 27 videos and images containing child pornography, including two files that were uploaded at the county government building. He was also the head of the Board of Zoning Appeals for the City of Milwaukee, appointed to the post by Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett and head of the Cream City Foundation, which provides grant money to LGBTQ groups in Milwaukee. Story Hour. So funny to me how people still, still do I get comments. It's not the people. It's not the people. As if, th what, there aren't people in government positions? Ah, <sighs> my God. <laughs> Whoa. Your ex, a doctor. Whoa. Whoa. Hang on. Milwaukee County judge is spending the night. Oh, I do apologize. This started on its own. <sighs> twerking. Teach a five-year-old how to twerk. And then this started. Um, we've got sick people in this world. It's unfortunate that so many people just never, ever do it anything to resolve their issues. Okay, Joe Biden. Oh, there are close-ups, but I don't want to dig for him. Where are you? Where are you? It's unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. This is our president, and he clearly has problems. But let's deny that. Let's just deny it and think that he's just A-OK. -okay. Must be matched with fairness and equity. Now, when President Harris and I took uh, a virtual tour of a vaccination center in Arizona, he often sounds like he's drunk, like he's kind of slurring his words. But did you hear that? 
How many times has this guy referred to the vice president as president? Not longer. Must be matched with fairness and equity. Now, when President Harris and I took... Uh, and he doesn't even realize that he said it. All righty. So let me be clear. A Biden-Harris administration won't increase taxes by a dime on anyone making less than 400000 a year. That's close to half a million dollars a year. Okay. <laughs> Read my lips. No new taxes. We don't learn, do we? We just never, ever friggin' learn. Biden tax hike could hit people earning 2000 Oh, wait, you said 4000 Now it's 2000 Oh, well, you said 2000 in a stimulus check. Now it's 1400 Oh. People believe, people believe they're government officials as if they're gods. Biden administration limits what Border Patrol can share with media about migrant surge at border. And Saki, you listen to her. You talk about transparency. Obama was the least transparent <clears throat> president ever, but oh, that lie was maintained for eight years. Oh, Mr. Transparency, Obama. Well, at least transparent. Okay, let's just hmm. let's just flip everything on its head, gaslight, and manipulate the shit out of people, and call this a country of what exceptional people. Okay, told not to say anything. Why? Why would they do that? Come on, because they don't want people to know. Biden tells migrants. Don't come over. Don't come over. <laughs> They're coming in because you promised to make things better. It seems to be getting worse by the day. Was it a mistake not to anticipate this surge? Well, first of all, there was a surge the last two years in, in, in 19 and 20. There was a surge as well. This uh, one might be worse. No, well, it could be, but here's the deal. We're sending back people to, f f first of all, the idea that Joe Biden said come, because I, I heard the other day that they're, they're coming because they know I'm a nice guy and I won't do They're saying something. this. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. They're not. The adults are being sent back, number one. That's number one. No, number two, what do you do with an unaccompanied child that comes to the border? Do you repeat what Trump did? Do you repeat what Trump did? Take them from their mothers, move them away, hold them in cells, et cetera? We're not doing that. So we'll That's a lie. And I just posted a video yesterday. And an aunt who accompanied a four-year-old girl was sent back. And the four-year-old girl was detained here. Lying. And I can't stand it. I can't stand it anymore. It's just, you know, we're a lying sack of shit people. I'm sorry. You know, everything is a friggin' lie. And I don't know how you guys are handling it, but I'm not handling it very well. I don't like living where I can't trust anybody. I don't like living, you know, in, in an area. You know, I just moved here, and I've been lied to, stolen from. You know, it, it's like, are you freaking kidding me? And it's not the American people. I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm living, what this is all about. And so many people just believe. They want to believe. They don't want the truth. They don't want the truth. So if the people don't want the truth and they remain willfully ignorant, how could you possibly live in a healthy country? Because the liars actually destroy joy, destroy other people. And, and it's like nobody cares. And I understand that, you know, some of you care. And clearly, you know, 
since I'm an emotional wreck all the time, I care. But this is, people just won't work on themselves, you know? It, it's remarkable. Remarkable. So if you can't, if trust is destroyed, you have nothing. Everything becomes meaningless. And then you just live, you know, at the expense of all of the liars who have an agenda. That's life. That, that then becomes life. That's it. Then everybody is just out for their own, you know, safety and, oh my God, man. Every man for himself. He's lying, just demented now. Soul. A soulless soul. Person. Too like, I don't even know what the hell he is. I don't know what these people are. I don't know what these people are. But they are so deranged. Subhuman. And these are the people who are in positions of power to destroy us all. It's become so obvious now that we're all being destroyed and we've got so many Americans who are going along with it and they're fine with going along with it. And that's what really pisses me off. UAE, United Arab Emirates. They have a drone that can shoot electricity into clouds and create rain just another tool for the weather modifiers. But there's no weather modification, Carol. You're just crazy. You're a conspiracy theorist. Ooh, get away from me. And as a conspiracy theorist, you're a domestic terrorist. Domestic terrorists. Those who speak the truth. Drones that fly into clouds, giving them an electric shock to control them into producing rain. Ah, but it's not real. Don't believe it, okay? Don't believe it, all of you. It's Mother Nature. Oh, it's climate change. Believe the lie. Believe the lie. Housing industry calls for U.S. action on skyrocketing lumber. So, why did I back this up with that UAA drone that's going to shoot electricity into clouds to produce rain? Because... They have many tools to produce flash flooding, tornadoes, oh, all of the weather that we've been seeing, those fires, right? So you de destroy somebody's house, they need lumber. Most people can't afford lumber now. Inflation skyrocketing. Food inflation skyrocketing. U.S. retail sales collapse in February. Online sales plunge. Nobody has money. Wow. Brace yourself for the most dramatic shift in the standard of living in all of U.S. history because it's coming. It's coming. They are assuring us that we don't have to be concerned about inflation because they have everything under control. Do you believe them? The value of the U.S. dollar has been steadily declining for a long time. Most Americans have grown accustomed to having the cost of living rise at a faster pace than their paychecks. Their paychecks have remained pretty much the same for decades. Geez, do you think maybe that's deliberate? Over the past 12 months, an enormous paradigm shift has begun. Instead of devaluing our currency a little bit at a time, now our leaders are going full Weimar. Oh, what's Weimar? Oh, the hyperinflation that Germany experienced. Our money supply is growing at an exponential rate, and this is becoming a major national crisis. As, a point, as, as I pointed, this is um, uh, Michael Schneider. It took from the founding of our county all the way to 2020 for M1 to reach $4 trillion, our country. 
complete and utter lunacy, and we are all going to literally pay the price for the madness, not just economic madness, full-blown, hyper-inflated madness all over the place. Food. Have you seen the headlines on the food? Food is really skyrocketing. So does it surprise you that we have fearful lawmakers who are responsible, directly responsible for all of what we are experiencing? Panic buttons, bulletproof vests for their protection. And yet we have lawmakers who want to deny the American people bulletproof vests and take away their guns. The National Guard is hanging out in Washington, D.C. They have not been told to go back to their states. No, they're guarding. They're guarding Congress. They're guarding those lawmakers. Why? Could something be in the offing? Perhaps. You know, the success of Asian Americans is now being characterized as embracing whiteness. And this is starting to be applied to other races, too. How can you push for anti-racism and minority empowerment when as soon as they become successful, you call them whitewashed? I guess that's been turned on its head, too. Well, the Americans who strive for material success, you'll be called a racist. You'll be called white, even if you're not white. You're just white because you have made a success of yourself. This is our healthy country. This is, this is what we've become in a rather short period of time. Marvel Comics introduces a gay captain. Okay. Alrighty. BC, British Columbia, removes gendered language from nearly 70 government regulations. Funny. We did the same thing. In fact, that was the legislation that was most important to Pelosi when they started this congressional session. Removing gendered language while we had millions of Americans. Freaking out, they couldn't pay rent, they couldn't buy food, their mortgages, stress beyond belief because of the deliberate lockdown of our economy. And Pelosi came in and thought it's important we remove the gendered language to be more inclusive. So get rid of he and she, brother and sister, husband and wife. Better regulations for British Columbians. Funny how countries, Western countries, are all following the same script. These important updates signal that all folks across gender diversity are valued in our social fabric here in B.C. Being intentional with inclusive language is a form of welcoming and belonging and a positive step toward Uplifting Gender Diverse Experiences. All righty. Yeah. So, this is what lawmakers think is really important. Get rid of he and she. My God, gender neutral packaging for school menstrual products? Paramount. Advisory group insists. Ah, Ottawa. So it's paramount that the tampons and pads provided to students include gender-neutral packaging. Did you ever think you would be living this? This is an advisory committee on equity. And this is what they, they think is paramount. 
The project hopes to provide coin-free menstrual hygiene product dispensers in all student washrooms from grade 4 to 12. By September 2022, they, 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 they couldn't just put in coin-free dispensers. Considering for the needs of all student demographics in the implementation and maintenance of this initiative is paramount. It's paramount. For example, private and unsupervised access, usage of gender-neutral language and packaging, reads the report. I don't. That, that one would even have to explain why. This is not only idiocy, uh, but perhaps not paramount as well, but dangerous, getting rid of the biological male or female and female. Uh, really? You think, well, I, people don't think anymore. New York City schools encourages kids to stop using words like mom and dad in inclusive language guide. I don't. I'm done. Okay. Polling firm characterizes asking a woman out as a form of sexual harassment. Puts it on par with sexual assault. Okay. So, the UK. Um, Britain. Sarah Everard, I'm not sure if you have heard about this, but a plainclothes police officer um, killed her. And there were demonstrations and protests and vigils. Then the police came in and used force to break up the vigil. So now they... Uh, you listen to this. Listen to this. Talk about you create the problem, get the reaction, and then provide the solution. What's the solution? More surveillance and more idiocy. This started out as a protest against the policing bill in Parliament, but it quickly turned into a march against the tactics used by officers to break up Saturday night's vigil in memory of Sarah Everard. By the time it ended, the government had doubled the size of its Safer Streets Fund aimed at improving lighting and CCTV. The Prime Minister really, really wanted to show that we are listening and that we want to act to help women feel safe in our streets, which is why this investment will go on very practical measures like increasing you know, better lighting, more CCTV, to try to give people that confidence that we really, really want to instill uh, after last week's terribly, terribly sad events. At Clapham Common, more and more tributes have been left at the bandstand, just a few streets away from where Sarah was abducted. We don't just need legislation, we need a kind of a UK-wide, a worldwide culture change. So much needs to change the way that we view women and the way that we respect women or the way that we don't respect women. The Prime Minister says he wants to drive out violence against women and girls and will bring in landmark legislation to toughen sentences and put more police on the streets. Saturday night's events in Clapham are now the subject of a review by the police inspectorate ordered by the Home Secretary. Oh, I can't listen to any more. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, I mean, it's... Okay, well, listen to what this... And in the... Okay, I, I just don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. What, where are people's head, brains... Um, they're gone. They're just gone. The week that the woman, Sarah Everard, uh, was abducted and we suppose killed because remains have been found in a woodland in Kent, I would argue that at the next opportunity for any bill that's appropriate, I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6pm, which I feel would make women a lot safer. And discrimination of all kinds would be lessened. Did, did you hear that curfew? All men. <laughs> all men. You need to stay home. 
Can't go out in between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. Do you see why we're living a nightmare? People actually keep these people in positions of power. Now, would that fly? Don't think so. But will it fly sometime down the road? I think so. What are people doing? What are people doing? What are people doing? Why are people just not doing anything about what is happening in our world? Why? Why? American Airlines looking into it. They're looking into it. John Kerry busted flying without a mask. Okay. Now, he got busted taking his private jet to, you know, oh, speak about that climate change. Climate change. The world is coming to an end if we don't do something. And he has been named the climate envoy, envoy, envoy. Sorry, Tennessee Star exclusive. By, they broke it. They broke it. Here, elites such as Gavin Newsom, Anthony Fauci, President Biden continue to make a mockery of their own pandemic guidelines. But Americans are getting arrested at banks, tossed from restaurants, ejected from Costco for not wearing a mask. But American Airlines, we're looking into it. We're going to look into it. He's not eating. He's not drinking. He's not wearing a mask. And he's on a commercial flight. Okay, he's on a commercial flight, and then you read the comments from people. I salute our very special presidential envoy for climate for not flying private. Why is he not flying private? Do you think that he wants to be flying with all of you? Yeah, he's in first class, but this is not what he wants to be doing. He wants his private jet back. But he got caught flying all over the world, talking about that great climate change, and then stepping into his private jet. That's causing the climate change. So that's why you should not salute him. You should be screaming at him. Uh, this, oh, all right. Well, okay, so <clears throat> being an elite hypocrite, hypocrite is hard work. Yeah. No, it's not. Because they don't give a shit about you or what you think of them. They don't care. They care enough. Okay, I gotta, I gotta at least come into first class on a commercial flight. And yeah. But then I'm going to be taking my private jet again. No mask. But American Airlines is going to look into it. American Airlines. Airlines have been banning people from travel. Throwing people off planes because they're not wearing a mask. But not John Kerry. Tanzanian president is dead. He's dead. Oh, he was outspoken about the vaccines, about the coronavirus. He's dead now. He was missing for two weeks, and he's dead. Geez, I wonder, was he assassinated? California theme park advisors ask guests not to scream on a roller coaster to limit COVID-19 spread. Don't scream. Don't just sit there. Otherwise, you could pass at like 70 miles per hour the coronavirus to someone sitting behind you. Oh, this is the idiocy that we're living. Children are lonely. Parents are stressed. CDC study finds remote learning. It's taking a devastating toll. A year later, they're just finding this out. Well, don't worry, because the CDC has come up with new guidelines to, well, protect you from the devastation. They're going to permit you to sit closer. 
CDC has just released the second major shift in its federal COVID-19 guidelines. Following its declaration that fully vaccinated individuals can ignore masks requirement, ignore the, the requirement and other social distancing measures while visiting friends and family in private. Yay! So I get to stand two feet from my friend without a mask in my own home. Hey! We're getting somewhere. CDC said K-12 through students in schools that practice universal masking can safely sit now three feet apart instead of six while teachers are still encouraged to maintain that six-foot distance. Yeah, media, mainstream media says it's going to speed up the reopening of schools. My head hurts. Students are asked to continue keeping six feet of distance from one another during eating and activities like singing, or sports, or at other times when masks can't be worn, as well as in common areas like school lobbies and auditoriums. The new guidelines apply regardless of whether community spread is low, average, or high. What? You're kidding? Are you kidding me? Wait a second. We put these uh, guidelines six foot, distance from one another, six feet, keep that six feet, um, plexiglass, you know, on desks, desks, mask worn, uh, e e because community spread was high. Now it doesn't matter. Now it just doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Don't question the CDC though. If you're an adult, don't question the CTC, okay? You just take for granted everything that they're saying is based on science. But at what point can they now be three feet apart from their friends when, well, you can't be, you got to maintain the six feet if you're eating, singing, sports, or if you're in the common area, school lobbies, auditoriums, um, I guess uh, classrooms. Uh, I am so... Washington plans to start lifting international travel restrictions in two, in two months. In two months. Okay. In two months, you can travel. Yay! I'm so happy that Mommy and Daddy are finally lifting these restrictions. Did you see this? I posted it on my library. Dot TV channel. Um, can I even play it? Ah, let's play it. See, what, what is it about humanity that, 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 that wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen, you know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking, you know, he doesn't know anything really about anything. And I'd say that to his face, nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy and he doesn't understand medicine. He, doesn't, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people who pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. You can't expect the sheep to really respect the best and the brightest. They don't know the difference, really. 
I mean, I, I like humans. Don't don't get me wrong. But basically, there is a there is a there's a vast the vast majority of them do not possess the the ability to judge who is and who isn't a really good scientist. I mean, that's a problem. That's a main problem actually with science. I'd say in this century because the science is being judged by people. The funding is being done by people who don't understand it. Okay, who do we trust? Fauci? Fauci doesn't know enough to, you know, if Fauci wants to get on television with somebody who knows a little bit about this stuff and debate him, he could easily do it because he's been asked. I mean, I've had a lot of people, president of the University of South Carolina asked Fauci if he'd come down there and debate me on the stage in front of the student body because I wanted somebody who was from the other side to come down there and balance my, because I felt like, well, these guys can listen to me, but I need to have somebody else down here that's going to tell them the other side. But Fauci didn't want to do it. But Fauci didn't want to do it. Nobel Prize winning inventor of the PCR test, Carrie Mullis, who, well, died I believe before his time, what was it, October of last year, right before the coronavirus kicks in, right before they start using that PCR test that doesn't diagnose viruses, Gary Mullis, Gary Mullis. Well, <laughs> yeah, here we go. Now, you can travel in two months. Uh, we can now reduce from six feet to three feet. Uh, well, I don't know where, but... Oh, you can... Or wherever, I don't know. Uh, and you don't have to wear a mask when you're visiting friends or family privately. Good! I'm so happy they're finally... See, I knew we were going to go back to normal, Carol. <laughs> There still are challenges ahead, particularly with regard to the variants that have now become very familiar to us. They are mutational changes in the virus strains that challenge us, both from the standpoint of spreading more rapidly, having a greater degree of pathogenesis, and even evading some of our monoclonal antibodies. But we can counter that in two ways. One, by vaccination maintaining the immune response against wild type, either by continuing to get a good quarter of vaccinations or boosting potentially in the future. Also, and finally, as always, to continue to implement the public health measures in the forms of masks, distance, avoiding congregate settings, and washing hands. This is not our first emergency. Since 2009, the U.S. has faced four significant emerging infectious disease threats. The H1N1 influenza pandemic, Ebola, Zika, and now COVID-19. While urgency demanded rapid and unique approaches in response to each of these threats, none resulted in the necessary sustained investments in for public health infrastructure. This lack of preparation continues to present significant challenges in our ongoing fight on COVID-19. If we don't act with permanent fixes, these challenges will continue to exist when the next public health threat emerges. First, CDC is leading with science and will continue to be the public health resource, scientific resource for the American public and for our international partners. Is it science? Really? Hey, hey. Hey, you, adult, adult, in any country, okay, uh, have you asked them to produce the science, you know, on masking and social distance and lockdowns, and do you ask questions? Do you? Because if you don't ask questions, you're not sane. You are not sane. We are never getting out of this. We are never going back to the crazy normal that we lived pre-COVID. This is our life. It's only going to get worse. The lockdowns are going to seesaw back, forth, back, forth, back, forth until they finally get the job done, which is making all of us a slave and, oh, and a, a obedient slave. Obedience is what they want. They want adults to submit like children to mommy and daddy. 
And the CDC, the corruption of the CDC, one just need to do a little bit of research to find out. Okay? Oh, my God. We're never going to get out of this. And that's why I think just prepping is the best. Just if you want to survive, if you have a reason to survive. Here's how 30 preppers have adapted and what they foresee happening next. This is what life has become. We don't live life anymore. We prepare to survive it. Many of us have been surviving in survival mode every single day. It gets really tiring. But a whole lot of people who could be living life are just prepping to survive it. That's our life now. I don't know about you, but that to me just does not seem to be a great standard. You know, everything is about prepping to survive what's coming. All right, look, you know, I wish I could say that all of the crazy I just showed you that that that's it that's it folks no more crazy oh no i have to pick and choose i have to pick and choose for long videos i've got to pick and choose these crazies and i try to pick the crazy that is making other people crazy that is so unbelievably detrimental to children in particular. What are we doing? What are we doing? Adults? Adults. We are adults. And we have so many people who literally bow down to other adults without question. Without question. When so much begs questions they don't question. That's why these psychopathic subhuman, just the worst of the worst in the world, the most evil, are getting away with implementing all of their agendas to bring about this new slave system for the world. Yeah, hard to comprehend, but if you are an adult, and not just some childlike, you know, figure in an adult body, which is really just oof, the hardest to look at. You know, they got wrinkles. They, you know, clearly an adult, and they act like children. Um, well, if you are someone who's kind of boosted up your maturity, you are asking questions. Because the insanity that we are living right now is nothing, nothing that we ever lived before. And when you have all of these radical changes taking place, and now at the same exact time, it's in your face. You know, that's when you begin to understand that radical changes do not take place organically. They're deliberately engineered. And this is a deliberate engineering to literally create a slave world. And if you're the type of an adult that still is also, you know, kind of walking the low road, but you're just not in a position of power to do anything this crazy, but all you care about is your own little life, you're helping to bring this about. You're helping to bring about a world where the majority literally are put into survival mode until they die. Wow, what a great life we have all manifested. 